Okay, students, let us start the class. Yesterday we were discussing about this symbol and character and bits. Today I will discuss a little more about the same terminology. Uh, yesterday I had told that characters are called as symbols and they are transmitted as bits. Yesterday also I had told, today also I will again say all the characters are symbols but the, all the symbols need not be characters. This is especially uh, with reference to information theory. That means symbols can be for any type of information. Character is generally only for the written type of information. That is why we generally don't use the word character in information theory. We keep on telling symbols and bits. Okay, with this particular recap, let me continue for today's class. Today we will discuss another important concept called probability in relationship with information. If all symbols occur with equal probabilities, then the code length can be fixed. For example, in the computer's typing, all the 26 alphabets in an English language, if they are having equal probability, then there can be uh, ASCII code allocated to each particular character. Okay. So, let us say for each alphabet in English language, we fix an ASCII code, 7 digit ASCII code or 8 digit ASCII code. If at all we allocate 8 digit, there can be 256 characters, including graphical characters. That is how that ASCII code is. And if at all we allocate 7 bits, there can be 128 characters, including all the grammatical uh, alphabets, grammatical symbols, which are used in the regular writing of English language. So that way, if all the symbols occur with equal probabilities, then the code length can be fixed. For example, 32 alphabets, if there are 32 alphabets in a given character set, then 5 bits can be fixed. For example, let us say, if you take only the English language as such, without any other punctuation marks or grammatical symbols, then we can simply allocate 5 bits for each right from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 till 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, we can have 32 bit streams. So, each particular uh, bit stream can be allocated to a particular character. So, we can have only 5 bits. But in the messages, when sequences are statistically dependent, the probabilities of occurrence of the symbols are unequal. You will have to understand this particular sentence. When the sequences are statistically dependent, probabilities of occurrence of the symbols are unequal. Sequence means what? Sequence is a collection of symbols. Yesterday I gave an example of the word hello, H-E-L-L-O. That is a sequence. Now that sequence is a collection of symbols. H is one symbol, E is one symbol, L1, L1 and O1. There are five symbols. Now, the sequences can be statistically dependent. For example, whenever somebody types, let us say H-E-L, then the most probable word there can be either hell or hello. Let us say we are seeing somebody is typing and let us say he is typing H-E, then L, then we can immediately predict either he is going to type one more L. If at all he stops there, then hell is there. Otherwise, let us say he continues, then one more thing is H-E-L-L-O. <coughs> In general, this is how we can predict. That is called a statistical dependency. Normally, in life, most of the information is statistically dependent. For example, you will start attending classes, first hour class, then second hour class, third hour class, fourth hour class. They are all statistically dependent. That means, 
after the first hour you know that there is going to be second hour there is going to be third hour there is going to be fourth hour so when they are statistically dependent the probability of occurrence of the symbols are unequal i'll elaborate on this particular thing for example this q u e u e that is the word which is being used regularly this is a very funny word where the spelling is five alphabets where the pronunciation is only one alphabet q so in this q u e u u u e whenever we type in english language all the characters do not have equal probability for example yesterday i gave an example of this typewriter where the keys are not organized in a sequential fashion like a b c d e f g h i j k they are organized in a different fashion so as to help the typist to type faster so there is a statistics involved there they have found out those particular characters which are occurring more and they have found out those particular characters which are occurring less for example the alphabet q is occurring less the alphabet z is occurring less whereas the alphabet a e i o u these vowels are occurring more so the point here is all the 26 alphabets in english language are statistically dependent that means whenever we type a word each word will have a meaning and the word's spelling is statistically dependent in the english language or in any particular language for that matter whenever we write whatever we speak whenever we write when we write the speech is converted into text in the written form in the script the text in the text the characters are statistically dependent because speech will contain words and words are predefined and words have meanings each word has a meaning and the word is converted into text and the text the characters are statistically dependent they are not independent as such okay so when the sequences are statistically dependent the probabilities of occurrence of the symbols are unequal for example here q and u and e and u and e they are statistically dependent this is the spelling of q that means if at all somebody writes q then we can predict if at all he writes one more u then we can predict either it is quiz or it is q it can be q u i or it can be q u e so in such case we can say characters are statistically dependent if they are statistically independent then they can all have equal probability of occurrence whereas when they are statistically dependent the probability of q occurring and the probability of u occurring are different they are unequal this is a very important point in information theory why this is so important because later on we are going to deal with the data rates uh, at that point i am going to elaborate more so if you have understood this then let us proceed further in general in life almost all type of information is statistically dependent which means whatever experience you had yesterday and whatever experience you had day before yesterday they are dependent on each other based on those experiences today will have a new experience and today's experience is always connected to yesterday's and day before yesterday's experience life is like that l i f e life means living in further evolution means with the more and more experience we learn more and more with more and more learning we evolve more and more that is how life is otherwise if you say that sir yesterday's class and today's class they are independent you cannot say that way whatever we discussed yesterday and whatever we discussed today they are dependent on each other that way in life most of the information is dependent on each other when it is dependent on each other now we can say which one is more probable which one is less probable based on that the occurrence of the symbols occur in different probabilities some alphabets in english language occur more in the text 
therefore some alphabets for example a e i o u all the vowels occur more in the text whereas the alphabets such as q and z they don't occur more in the english language so in such a case if variable length codes are assigned then the data rate can be reduced i'll annotate this once again i'll underline this if variable length codes are assigned then the data rate can be reduced i'll give an example now you are already familiar with the dsp so when voice is converted into digital signal 4 kilohertz is voice bandwidth into 2 is the nyquist rate and each sample is quantized and encoded into 8 bits the total data rate is 64 kilobits per second now in this particular data rate each voice sample is assigned with 8 bits here the statistical dependency of voice or statistical independency of voice are not considered because voice is a dynamic signal of course in the modern communication systems wherever there is a speech processing there are speech predictors as well that is how artificial intelligence has been evolving let me not get into that particular topic that is something different otherwise when we convert this voice into digital stream for each sample we are allocating 8 bits that is 64 kilobits per second which is a standard data rate for voice communication now in such a case the data rate is never going to be reduced as far as the that example of voice communication is concerned it remains 64 kbps only the data rate cannot be reduced but let us say in the english text when you are typing sms in sms is english text it is not voice and in english text the occurrence of a is different the occurrence of q is different statistically the probabilities of occurrence of these characters are different now we need not assign the same number of bits to a also and q also for example a is occurring more q is occurring less so we can have a variable length code we need not have a 7 bit ascii character as a standard for all the alphabets or extended ascii is about 8 bits we need not have it instead for a regularly occurring character or symbol we can have less number of bits and for a rarely occurring symbols we can have more number of bits for example we can assign 001 to a and we can assign 00101 for q now in ascii code all the characters have a same number of bits whereas in information theory we can have different number of bits for different symbols if a is occurring mostly then if we reduce the number of bits which is used for a then we are going to reduce the effective data rate q is rarely occurring for which we can have five bits because anyhow it is rarely occurring this way we can have a variable length code for each symbol that is a remarkable finding from the father of information theory called claude shannon he is the one who found out all these mechanisms of how to reduce the data rate in the communication channels so this particular course information theory and coding is mostly attributed to claude shannon's work so please remember this if variable length codes are assigned then the data rate can be reduced based on this particular fact there are two things now one thing is when the sequences are statistically dependent the probabilities of occurrence of the symbols are unequal now when the probability of the occurrence of symbols are unequal we can have variable length codes for each symbol and that is how the effective data rate in the channel can be reduced now when the effective data rate can be reduced there can be more number of data pumped into the same communication channel that is how efficiency of the communication channel or the capacity of the communication channel can be increased it is not the efficiency 
it is the capacity of the communication channel can be increased now let me come to some blocks which are present in the communication system we have something called source encoder the source encoder converts symbol sequence into binary sequence by assigning code words to the symbols which means here you have symbols symbols can be a typing from the keyboard symbols can be a text if at all the symbol is of some other form it has to be converted into a digitized form which means voice cannot be directly fed into the source encoder if at all if it is voice in case of a mobile phone if it is a voice then the voice can be converted into digital by means of an adc by means of a analog to digital converter and that digital information itself can contain symbols now these symbols are fed into the source encoder and the output of the source encoder is bits now let me stick to the text information itself for example let us say sms you type an sms in english language that sms is a collection of symbols now it is one sequence the sequence will contain collection of symbols now the symbols are statistically dependent and their probability of occurrence is different now the source encoder will allocate the bits for these symbols i gave an example for a it can be 3 bits for q it can be 5 bits source encoder will have its own memory for that matter which means there will be a table of bits which are allocated to each symbol we are going to work out more exercises on source encoder in the future classes this is the job of the source encoder so what is the job of the source encoder source encoder will reduce the redundant information remember this again source encoder will reduce the redundant information in the sense for all the symbols the same number of bits are not allocated the variable code length is allocated and then effectively the number of bits is reduced which means a source encoder reduces the redundancy let me discuss one more thing now there is something called as channel encoder the need for channel encoder is this now the communication channels distort the signal during transmission yesterday we had seen the communication channel will introduce a noise and interference and distortion everything is there now the analog channels will take a continuous waveform at the input but produce a noisy smeared version at the output because of this distortion now when the noisy smeared version is there if uh, the lata mangeshkar song is transmitted at the output there can be usha utup song okay that is distortion now again the discrete channels accept the sequence of symbols as input and produce a replica at the output but there can be errors even with the discrete channels there can be errors because of noise and interference in case of analog signal there can be distortion in case of digital signals there may not be distortion because it is simply zero and one but there can be errors of the bits themselves because of the noise therefore at the receiver it is required to detect the errors and to correct them for example when you type an sms message in whatsapp that sms message goes from your mobile phone into its cpu in the digital form from the cpu it is going into a modulator and there there is a analog carrier let us say 2.4 gigahertz carrier through that carrier radio wave your sms digital information is transmitted into the free space through the antenna now at the receiving mobile phone there is an antenna which will pick up this radio signal and there will be a demodulation occurring inside the other receiving mobile phone and later on it is again going into a dsp for a digital signal processor and it will extract that particular digital information and that digital information has to be converted back into text now visualize this particular communication during this particular communication the sms message is modulated on a radio carrier and the radio carrier is traveling in free space in the air medium <coughs> okay in the wireless medium 
Now in the wireless medium, there are other signals also present. There are so many cellular service providers who are all using the same free space. Airtel, Aircel, Vodafone, BSNL, Idea and uh, uh, Reliance Geo. They are all using, there are so many service providers, they are all using the free space. So there is interference. Apart from that, there is noise in the free space. Electromagnetic noise or industrial noise, atmospheric noise, that is going to affect the signal there. And apart from that, the channel itself, the air medium itself is going to distort the signal. Now because of all these things, the SMS with you, which you type in your mobile phone and the SMS which is received at the friend's mobile phone can become different. But it will never become different, you have seen that. Why it will never become different? Because in both of those mobile phones at the receiving end, there is something called error detection and error correction. That is the beauty of information theory and that is the beauty of technical evolution of digital electronics along with analog electronics. So what happens here is when the signal is going through the channel, errors are bound to occur but at the receiver these errors are detected and later on once the error is detected later on it is corrected. For this purpose there is one more block in the communication system that is called channel coder and this process is called channel coding. So what is channel coding? Channel coding is the process of systematically adding extra bits for error detection and correction. You people are already familiar with the even parity and odd parity. Additional parity bits can be used or additional parity bits can be added into a bit stream and that additional bit is not part of the information. That additional bit can be utilized for odd parity or for even parity. I will give examples later on about this. So there is something called channel coding now. Let me show you the block diagram. There is this information source where the symbols are input and for each symbol the source encoder is going to give the number of bits as the output. Now this is coming to channel encoder. The channel encoder is going to add additional bits just for the purpose of error detection and error correction. Afterwards this bit stream is going to a modulator and the modulator will convert not convert actually, modulator will superimpose this digital information onto an analog carrier so that analog signal can be easily propagated in free space. In the free space, in the communication channel, generally it is the carrier which is always used in the analog sine waveform because it is easy for the analog waveform to propagate in the uh, communication channel. So, to have a small recap, source encoder reduces redundancy whereas channel encoder introduces planned redundancy. Let us say for the information source, let us say A is input here at the source encoder, the output can be 001, imagine that way. For the character A, source encoder gives 001. For the character Q, the source encoder gives out let us say 00101. I am just giving an example, that's all. It need not be fixed that way. Now A will have 3 bits, Q will have 5 bits. Because they are, their occurrence of probability, probability of occurrence is different for A and Q. That is how source encoder is reducing the number of bits. That means it is reducing redundancy. Whereas in the channel encoder, for each such bit stream, additional bits are added, one or two or three additional bits are added so that at the receiver it will check for even parity or odd parity. I will give an example. Let us say for A the output here is 001. Now the channel encoder will add one more bit. Let us say that is 0011. Now the 0011 goes to the modulator, 0011 is transmitted through the communication channel. At the receiver, 
it has to receive 0011. If it receives 0011, it checks for even number of ones there. Let us think that even parity is utilized in this particular system. Then at the receiver, it checks that 0011 and the receiver finds out that there is no error now because even number of bits are there. But the receiver knows which bit is meant for parity. In the transmitter as well as in the receiver, common algorithm is used in a software and receiver knows which particular bit is parity bit. It will check for the even parity and it finds out that the received bit stream is accurate. Then it rejects that parity bit, the last one, and it takes that 001, which is character A. This is what happened during communication. Now imagine when source encoder gives 001, channel encoder gives 0011 and it is modulated. In the communication channel, that I say there is an error and the receiver receives 0010. Imagine that way. If the receiver receives 0010, it has to look for even parity. But it is finding out that there is an error now. There is an even parity, but now it is the odd parity, it is not even parity. Immediately the receiver detects the error. When the receiver detects the error, later on there are two choices. One choice is receiver can ask the transmitter to send the message once again. That is one option. Second option is the receiver can detect which bit is having an error. Out of those four bits, which particular bit is having an error and the receiver itself can flip that error. That zero, it can make it into one. If there is error of one, it can make it into zero. So it can simply flip the bits and the receiver can correct the error. Now the receiver can detect the error, receiver can correct the error and it is doing every time whenever you send an SMS. That is why always whenever you send an SMS, the same SMS goes to the other person. Whenever you send a WhatsApp message, the same WhatsApp message goes to the other person because we are dealing with the communication product which is a magical product in our hand. I keep on telling in the classes that transistor is the eighth wonder of the world and I keep on telling that mobile phone is the ninth wonder of the world. Why? Because in mobile phone, whatever we are discussing technically, everything is there. Modulator is there, channel encoder is there, source encoder is there, DSP is there and operating system is there, sensors are there, radio communication is there, and for digital storage, your contact list enough memory is there and your photographs camera is there. You can pick up a, you can take a pic and you can send it to anybody else. You can record a video also. You can log into the WebEx class as well. What is not there in a mobile phone? There are so many apps present in a mobile phone. So this is a wonderful device which is in your hand. The mobile phone is a wonderful device. So I keep saying transistor is the eighth wonder of the world and mobile phone is the ninth wonder of the world. Okay. So let me come back to our subject called information theory. Remember source encoder reduces redundancy, channel encoder introduces planned redundancy. In the sense, source encoder reduces the data rate, channel encoder adds additional bits for the detection of errors and for the correction of errors. In every digital communication system, these two blocks are always present. So whatever I told, the same thing here, respectively at the receiver, channel decoder and source decoder are required. At the transmitter, it is encoders and the receiver, it is decoders. In addition, modulator and demodulator are required as part of the matching the signal to the channel that is being used. For example, we have optical fiber, we have a coaxial cable, we have a twisted pair, copper wire and we have free space. Now, it is very easy for the analog carrier wave to move through these channels. Even if we put a digital carrier into these particular channels, because of the channel characteristics, they are going to become analog only. A square wave is going to become a sine wave only. 
because of the non-linearity of the communication channels. So it is better that we always use analog signals as carriers. That is what is meant by matching the signal to the channel. Lesser the data rate for a sequence, more efficient will be the transmission. Okay. It is 12.45 now. Now let us see how do we measure information. Just a minute. Let me see a little bit of water. Let me resume in the online class now. I am supposed to talk non-stop and you are supposed to listen non-stop. Somehow we have to adjust to this. Until offline classes start, we have to bear with this particular mechanism. Okay, let me resume. How do we measure information now? In the 21st century nowadays, everything is measurable. Your course will have course outcomes and your BE will have program outcomes. Bachelor of Engineering is a program and at the end of four years, the outcomes of the program are going to be measured. At the end of this information theory and coding, at the end of the semester, course outcomes need to be measured, which means after me teaching this course to you, after you learning this course, what is expected from you? That is called course outcome. After you finish engineering degree, what is expected from you? That is called program outcome. That way, there are program outcomes, there are course outcomes. These are all measurable. That is why I told in the 21st century, everything is measurable. I was going through an uh, online course called uh, uh, Science of Well-Being. There the professor who is an American professor, she has measured happiness as well. In America, they have something called happiness index where they are measuring the happiness index of each person and they are finding out how happy you are in the scale of 0 to 9. So, if happiness itself is measurable nowadays in the 21st century, then the information has to be measurable. When the information is measured, we can actually find out how much of information is transmitted how effectively the information is received. So, so, based on that, let us proceed further. The source encoder replaces the symbols by bits, which we already know. Hence, the goal here is to evaluate the rate of information at the source and to evaluate the maximum transmission rate. That means, if I have a coaxial cable or if I have an optical fiber, what is the maximum transmission rate for the given channel? Similarly, if I have a free space also, in the free space, what is the maximum transmission rate? Forget about the channel themselves, only thinking care or taking care of the transmitter itself. What is the maximum transmission rate from the transmitter itself that we have to measure? They will not be same when the varied length coding is utilized by the source encoder. This we already have seen, which means when the symbols are statistically dependent, the code which is used for each symbol can be having a variable number of bits. So naturally, the transmission rate need not be a constant number. That is when I gave an example of that 64 kbps. In that 64 kbps, the samples are statistically independent. In the sense, when they take two samples from a voice waveform, those two samples are statistically independent. They are not connected. Why? Speech is a dynamic thing. Voice is a dynamic thing. Music is a dynamic thing. Anytime speech can change, voice can change, music can change. So in such a case, it may not be so easy to predict what is going to be the next speech sample. But it is, it is possible to predict what is going to be the next text input 
as far as the textual information is concerned as there are 26 alphabets in english language it is possible to predict the next occurrence of a character but it is not possible to predict the next occurrence of a speech sample so that way voice is always having a fixed length coding there the voice samples are statistically independent whereas in text they are statistically dependent so there is a varied length coding if there is a varied length coding then the transmission rate cannot be constant now when the transmission rate cannot be constant how do we measure we have a term here called entropy we have a term here called entropy this entropy is not the entropy that belongs to mechanical engineering this entropy specifically belongs to information theory okay don't get confused with this term entropy it is used uh, in the different meanings with the different contexts here we use this term entropy as the average information content per symbol we make use of a term called entropy which is the average information content per symbol as we know each symbol is having different information now we send a sequence we want to find out the average information content per symbol when we transmit a number of sequences it is also called as the average unpredictability in a random variable now the sample which is going out is a random variable none of these variables are constant so this random variable up to what extent it is unpredictable based on that we have a term called entropy now how i have underlined the definition for entropy along with this you can see the average information rate is defined as the minimum average number of bits per second needed to represent the output of the source there is an average information rate okay just look at this r is equal to small r s into h where h is bits per symbol now we already know each symbol will have different number of bits but we can take an average right we know that a will have three bits we know that q will have five bits that way we know that from a to z each character will have how many bits that average can be taken that is called entropy that is bits per symbol i will uh, get to the technical definition of entropy later on when we deal with the exercises as of now just remember that entropy h is equal to bits per symbol where the source is emitting information from the source encoder i am not discussing the channel encoder here i am just discussing the source encoder so the source is emitting information that is called r now there is a symbol rate the number of symbols coming into the source encoder and the entropy that is happening during this transmission or something called source encoding so we can say r is equal to rs into h where rs is symbols per second and h is bits per symbol you remember this now you are typing into the laptop and per second you may keep on typing some alphabets that is symbols per second that depends on your typing speed now each symbol is represented by a certain number of bits a is represented by 3 q is represented by 5 that way i keep on repeating all these things again and again so that you will have strong basics now you will have to remember these now for the lifetime if you remember all these basic concepts later on this course is really an easier course for you if you don't recall all these basics later on when we reach the second chapter and third chapter there are a lot of mathematical approaches to information so you will have to keep on revising these basics so symbol rate is symbols per second entropy is bits per symbol entropy is nothing but the average information per symbol right that i already told entropy is nothing but the average information content per symbol so now what is the unit for r now 
symbols per second into bits per symbol symbol gets cancelled it is nothing but bits per second that is the data rate this we already know right data rate is nothing but bits per second that we already know but how we arrived at it in information theory in uh, voice communication it is 4 kilohertz into 2 into 8 that is 4 kilohertz voice signal into 2 is the Nyquist sampling rate into 8 bits is the encoding for each sample. Now there also you get bits per second only. Here also you are getting bits per second only. Unit is the same in both cases. But this bits per second is obtained in a different way. That bits per second is obtained in a different way. In the sampling quantizing encoding also it is bits per second but it is obtained in a different way. Here in the information theory it is obtained in a different way because we are inputting a text now. So text is number of symbols per second and each symbol is represented by bits. That is how we get bits per second. A small note, I briefly mentioned about channel capacity. The channel capacity is defined as the rate of data transfer over the channel with an arbitrarily small probability of error. Now we are discussing about a channel which is going to carry the digital information. So we are discussing the digital information uh, in relationship with the channel. So channel capacity. I will repeat is defined as the rate of data transfer over the channel with an arbitrarily small probability of error. This probability of error should not be larger. If it is larger at the receiver, it may not be possible to correct the error or detect the error. I gave an example of adding one parity bit for three bits of an alphabet A. Now, if there are only four bits and if there is a one bit error, it is easily possible for the receiver to detect the error and correct the error by means of that parity bit. Now, imagine if there is a large probability of error, let us say there is a heavily noisy communication channel, then it may not be possible for the receiver to detect the error and correct the error. I will give an example. Right now only I am talking to you, you are all remaining muted and you are all listening to me. I am the host and so I have muted you all. Imagine all of you unmute now. If all of you unmute now and if I start speaking now, there is a probability of error which is really very high. Where everybody's voice is going to be turning as a noise into somebody else. So, no one will be able to listen about what is going on. So, in such a case, there is a very high probability of error. Even if I shout also, you listeners may not be able to understand whatever I am shouting. Now, you may not be able to detect this loss of speech also in between. For example, sometimes, let us say when I speak, in between, let us say, a portion of the waveform is lost in the communication, you can actually detect it and correct it in your own way. Now you can always imagine a sentence when I speak the beginning of the sentence and the end of the sentence in between let us say a particular portion of the word is lost. By your own experience you can actually find out what I was speaking and you can actually understand the whole sentence without me repeating it once again. That means at your end you can detect the error and you can correct the error provided the probability of error is arbitrarily small. But the error is quite huge, it may not be possible for the receiver to detect the error and correct the error. That is when channel capacity is carefully defined this way. It is the rate of data transfer over the channel with an arbitrarily small probability of error. If the error is larger, then we say the channel capacity is not at all defined at that time. Because there is no point in sending an information over a communication channel if the receiver does not receive it properly. That is why we should ensure that the probability of error is lesser. Now there is a Shannon's formula. Shannon's formula for the channel capacity he defines in this manner. 
c equals b into log to the base 2 of 1 plus s by n. Why log to the base 2? We are discussing about the digitized information. Anything and everything is going to be digitized in the digital communication system. So, here b is the bandwidth of the channel, s is the average signal power, n is the average noise power. Why signal power and noise power? Because signal and noise are analog in nature. In the communication channel, noise is also analog, signal is also analog, radio signal is analog there. So, signal to noise ratio is nothing but S by N. So, that ratio plus 1 take log to the base 2 into the bandwidth of the channel. This whole thing is called as channel capacity. Okay. It's already time now. Now, I will end this class for today. This formula you remember, we are not going to derive this formula as such. Claude Shannon has done a wonderful work on deriving this particular uh, formula. Claude Shannon worked lifelong on information theory itself. And because of his work, today we have digital communication between you and me. Today, we are using mobile phone which contains a source coder as well as a channel encoder, source decoder as well as channel decoder. Whenever you use a mobile phone for any purpose, remember Claude Shannon. Because of him, we are now enjoying digital communication. With this message, I will end the class for today. Remember this formula, C equals B into log to the base 2 of 1 plus S by N. I will be posting the attendance link in the Google class. See you in the next class. Until then, take care and bye-bye.